um, I've uploaded the um, slides. I don't know if you have access to them. Or better still, if we if you don't, I could actually just share my screen. Just go ahead and share your screen. I can't see it here. Okay, thank you. So can you see my screen? Yes, I can. Okay, so um, I assume everyone can see my screen. So without much delay, um, um, like my name is Rocket Dote and I oversee technology solutions and operations as well as cybersecurity of information, um, IES group. So um, I'll be speaking on remote access Trojans. I'll be giving you expert analysis on um, um, best practices and um, the trends on um, remote access Trojan as it affects us in Nigeria and also globally. I'll be using case studies from industrial experience and um, real life experience actually. So first, um, we all know what the situation we find ourselves in. We are in a pandemic induced house arrest for those that obey the isolation. And what does this create? It creates the perfect storm for insider threats and a bevy of um, cybersecurity concerns. Um, pandemic created perfect storm for insider threats by Randy Treshiak of Set Insider Threat Center, Canon Mellon University. So um, why I kept this as um, a forefront in my presentation is because I want us to look at it. I want to put, um, share and give insights and analysis through two views, two perspectives. One from the individual angle that affects us. Can everybody hear me? Yes, I can hear you very well. Okay, okay. So um, first from um, an individual perspective, that is as us as citizens and um, use devices. Secondly, from the corporate point of view, a global pandemic, a remote workforce, economic uncertainty, all these are ingredients for a perfect cyber attack. How are they even ingredients in the first place? First, a global pandemic, people are resorting to remote operations. And as people are resorting to remote operations, we are gonna be seeing um, um, people working from outside the confines of a um, formal business environment. If you're in your office, if you're a banker, for instance, once you just get into the office, you sign in, employee clock in, you go to your system, your, so your um, the network um, access control device registers your system that you have been, you are, you are on duty, you're in the office, you have been switched on, assigns you an IP address, every operation you um, conduct is being monitored from IT. You cannot watch pornography, you cannot visit adult content, you cannot visit illicit content. Why? Because your um, intrusion detection system, your IDS, is, your, your, web, your firewall is going to prohibit you. So there's so many security technical operational controls that are in place, you understand, that control, restrict your activity. But when you're not coming into, when you're not working remotely, your now is like an ex expansion of your workforce, you understand, is now expanded. So the network of the company being expanded, there are so many security considerations because you don't have your IDS, your company security controls, you don't have your wireless firewall, you don't have a lot of things in place. So sometimes uh, most company, depending on their security compliance level, may resort to even staff using their personal systems to uh, assess company resources. So this brings a huge bunch of threats. You understand? Now as individuals, we are going to be seeing a lot of, um, we will become more susceptible with, there's actually a spike in phishing attacks. There's actually a spike in social engineering attacks. There's a, a, actually a spike in vision, um, smishing. Smishing means SMS campaigns aimed to lure users into acting without thinking. You understand? 
um, you see apps on different pop-ups coming in here and they're telling you that coronavirus fund, this and that, click to get information. Once you click, you are just donating your destiny and your money to cyber criminals, you understand? So these are some of the concerns, like I mentioned, that we're gonna be talking about in detail today, but we've spent much time, so let me just go straight to the salient points. What are the motivations for um, remote access Trojan operations? First, there are a few of them, but more importantly, national espionage operations, we all know, um it's important we we reconcile to re reality that we are actually in a in a conflict we're actually in a conflict where guns and ammo tanks are not the tools to combat um, um each other today it's actually information it's actually your data your data is the currency of this new age and it's very important you you comply with the best practices of how to protect your data um secondly intent to steal information for fraudulent scheme so intent to steal if that's just generally when people want to um, um exploit the negligence of people of citizens of um, connect people using their connected device to conduct their financial um, operations, transfer money, watching social media, and all, all those engagements that makes them happy. So people try to exploit their negligence in order to steal information. When your when um, your um, online service provider releases an update for your browser, and you and you you're not into the habit of updating your devices because you feel if you update your devices, it will consume much data it's important you know that you're just setting yourself up for cyber crime do you understand to be a victim of cyber crime um you have unintentional insider threats these are issues that concerns the our corporate guests unintentional insider threat is that situation that occurs when an employee gives out company information without him or her knowing accidentally you understand and why is this coming up in our remote access trojan um, webinar it's because Companies are resorting to remote workforce. So you have a lot of concerns of how people is going to, are gonna use and abuse data, company data, you understand? There are practices that they may conduct that put the entire organization at risk. For example, HR staffs working remotely, you understand? And they have all the HR records of all the company and, they, and the, the same device they're using for company operations, they are allowing their children to use it to play Candy Crush. Just imagine such level of hey. exposure you understand and you yes, know with that why it's important we mention such um, um con uh, situations in our webinar we also look at intentional insider threats now there are motivations for intentional insider threats serious motivations for intentional insider threat what are these motivations we look at first because companies now um let me go back to the first slide um, remember uh, economic uncertainty when I mentioned here. Now, the truth is people, businesses cannot keep up. Many of them, if you have your job now, you need to thank your God. If you're a Christian, if you're a Muslim, because uh, it's not going to be very easy for most MSMEs. It's not also going to be very easy for large corporates. Think when it comes to uh, supply chain, the fractured supply chain globally. So you may not even have access to raw materials. You're not that you don't have the money. You have the money, but you cannot even use it to buy raw materials because people are not moving. You understand there's an enforced lockdown people that have borrowed debt so there's a whole lot of economic concerns and this affects businesses and when it affects businesses you start seeing individuals businesses will be forced to downscale those that cannot downscale they'll be forced to resort to other strategies such as slashing their worker salary now imagine the kind of burden that's going to be on the it department in times like this such burdens mm -hmm. is going to expose the it staffs into undue stress now you can't tell me people are working from home i'm the it staff you should actually be thinking of increasing my pay because i'm going to be working extremely to make sure it systems we never planned of are going to be in place for business to go on so now you now look at these it staff and you're talking of financial stress that they face you understand um, um when they cannot meet up their financial obligations when they feel they are not treated by the company properly when they feel they are not giving due consideration this can lead to unnecessary intentional insider threats you understand we are what are we discussing of now we are discussing about the motivations so when a, a staff and employer has become disgruntled and has sensitive company information believe you me it's 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 not going to end well i recall um like i mentioned i'll be using real life case studies to um, augment my analysis there was a time i had a colleague her name was um, nora 
and um, she told me that okay rock please we are having an issue we they are into um what do you call it this um tourism package they all this dubai travel to dubai with hundred thousand naira, two hundred thousand naira. so they have a bevy of customers and they maintain those customers um information in, a, in an excel data table just an excel document of um of highest 100 kilobytes you understand and all of a sudden, um, the sister to their CEO has been trying to penetrate Nigeria because she stays abroad and she wants to do the exact business. And the sister to the CEO and the CEO are not in good terms. So what and so what does she do? She has an insider, one of a lawyer list that everybody knows that this is August sister's friend, this guy. All of a sudden, they just start seeing that they stop getting customer calls. Customers do not call them for their travel plans, Easter plans. And they're like, what's going on? All of a sudden, also, they start seeing a new company pushing adverts on Instagram. If they are offering Dubai for 300,000 Naira, this company is offering Dubai trips for 200,000 Naira. Lo and behold, it was the sister to the CEO has already replicated their business. And I, okay, how come only for them to investigate and they saw that this woman has already taken all their customers? How did she get our customer information? They know it is this guy. They suspect it is this guy, but they cannot establish any evidence that it is this guy. Do you understand? What is What are we discussing of insider threats? These are just real life case in points why you should take it seriously. Now we go to maladvertising. Now, one of the major problems, I'm sure most all of us who are privy to be in this webinar can testify that at one point of their life when they use their devices they are the victim of maladvertising you will just be using your phone and all of a sudden one annoying pop-up will just come out on your phone screen or your computer screen block your screen most part is that some of them will start counting time for you to even delete and close them one two they'll be showing you advertisements with your own data you understand sometimes you'll be wondering how did this get into my device do you understand so we're also going to um put um we put emphasis on that and show you um practical instances how you can protect yourself and also um avoid um, avoid being exposed to such um level of maladvertising ddos DDoS means distributed denial of service. It is one of those problems that um, people can, when you have, it's actually also, it's in the um, enterprise landscape and it's also a technique that people use to bring down businesses or to make people submit to cyber extortion. Hey, I'm going to bring down your, um, there's a, in the, in the subsequent slides, there's a case study, case study one, where I'll show you a mail that, that we received in our office to address this issue. Like they will threaten you and if you don't comply, they will bring down your service. You can't do anything. Nobody will be able to access your service online. How did they do it? Because they've implanted a remote Trojan on your web portals that you don't know. They've uploaded a shell and illicit code. We'll be discussing in this with details. And more importantly, there are actually a bevy of uh, motivations that um, causes remote access Trojan to be installed by cyber actors. We'll also look at look at that subsequently let's move on so what is remote as what is a remote access trojan a remote access trojan these are programs that provide the capability to allow covert surveillance or ability to gain unauthorized access to a victim pc actual devices remote access trojan of whom mimic similar behaviors of a key logger a key logger is just a minute piece of malicious code most times not really malicious because um, companies actually use it to actually collect data, monitor how employees use um, corporate issue devices. It's al by allowing the automated collection of keystrokes, username, password, screenshot, browser history, emails, chats, and etc. Remote access trojans differ from keyloggers in that they provide the capability for an attacker to gain unauthorized remote access to a victim machine through specially config called communication protocols which are set up upon initial infection of the victim computer we will do a practical um, demonstration of this in subsequent um, slides please hope um are you all hearing me let me minimize this thing to confirm first Yes, um, I think all is well. Uh, Everyone is hearing you are putting and enjoying your your session. Yeah, we can without the view with the bandwidth issues and latency. Okay, okay. I'm sure you guys can hear me. So um that's one. So um what's the this is the architecture of a of a of a remote access trojan? So it's also important I make mention remote access trojans, just the way we see um technological advancements in our 
um, um, some antiviruses on our personal devices. Um, OEMs and service providers are actually looking for better ways to get to improve their services and they churn out new releases of the solutions they sell. The same way cyber criminals are criminals are stepping up their game so first we have remote access trojan but what is the bigger picture of this remote access trojan it's actually a bot all remote access trojan as the word remote denotes actually have an attacker having access remotely to users data illegally so this also the um a architecture an architecture that sh sheds light on how it works so you see bots pair to pair you see the client and server this constitutes of the command and control network then you have the vectors the activities a malicious actor um, could implement to um infect attack its targets spam generations phishing mails nigerian prince email bogus claims infecting systems spare phishing there are a whole bunch of malicious activities that could go out here more recently we have the homoglyph attack and a bevy of uh, even improper permissioning so let's move on backdoor operations this backdoor into the victim machine can allow an attacker unfettered access including the ability to monitor user behavior change computer settings browse copy files utilize the bandwidth for possible criminal activity access connected systems and more now some people um it is important at this stage People don't really understand that um, the the first the sites they visit expose them as victims of a possible cyber attack. The apps you download also expose you to your information being stolen. The 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 SMS you respond to, clicking on links from unverified sources, also puts you at risk. How how are this information being stolen? First. You look at hooking uh, there's a trend called javascript keyloggers it's actually both though most web application um, um firewalls actually prevent helps you to put gives you some level of um security but there's also an involvement in this practice um how does does cyber criminals steal information hooking browsers and applications how do they hook browsers when you access a malicious website they actually and you respond to pop-ups on those websites you actually get your system infected by malware more worrisome is when you don't have an antivirus or a system security suit that could actually detect and block this activity before it gets it spreads into your system and takes over your system it is also important at this point i mentioned that your system can be hijacked without you knowing your data can be transferred from your devices from your phone without you knowing we're actually going to do a practical demonstration today in that your 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 files you type your cv if you're in the habit of saving passwords on your browsers and you are not in the practice of updating your browsers you'll be a victim and you know what it means when a cyber criminal can hijack all your safe passwords on your browsers which is actually a bad practice in the first place it's actually the, it doesn't end well using web injection scripts that add in extra fields to web forms you look at cross-site scripting you look at um mails that require you to put to fill in your content or giving your information your credit card information on on just via the mail mail body itself those are wrong practices you shouldn't um, comply to in any way first your financial organization your financial institution even your company will not resort you to start filling information from your mail is a practice a long old practice used by cyber criminals to steal user data and um, this also um brings my um brings me to a point where it's important i mentioned that um most companies now um more worrisome is in this pandemic induced moment when people are actually looking for how to set up their online business one way or the other. Now, the thing is, when you use Google, when you use Yahoo, when you use all these public known email service providers, they have so many security controls that helps you detect and block um, fraudulent phishing mails. The problem, however, is when you resort to your own domain name, say my name is Inkechi or Ahmed, Ahmed amedstores.com my email is amed at amedstores.com so you're not routing through google except you have a google cloud account you're just maybe using a cpa lt lot square squirrel mail 
you have to be very, very careful because most phishing emails that will be sent to you, if you ever be a target, will enter your inbox. On the flip side, if you're using popular email service providers like Google, you understand those emails they have so many controls that will automatically automatically detect those emails because when they send it to you in most times they don't actually send it to you alone they send it to a bevy of targets they just they detect and people who report that mail actually provide more information to goggles or yahoo threat intelligence so when they send to any of google user they will actually say okay this the same mail that actually be reported we block it but when you're resorting to your own email service system this was the reason why um, john Podesta, and hillary clinton i'm sure you can anyone can remember that each situation uh, it actually it was the the, the third, third parties actually had access to john Podesta email conversations with hillary clinton that's how wikileaks was publishing the content i was making the world know that she could authorize remote strike from her phone because of her email they were actually conniving with, against bernie sanders so you can imagine how the the kind of danger you expose yourself when you resort to your own email service providers you have to ensure that whoever is providing or hosting your data has some level of web application firewall or is compliant with some email security standards as possible from grabbing these finding specific open windows and stealing their contents. A lot of tools like Backtrack, a lot of tools like Kali, especially if you don't have an antivirus in place, can, can provide tons of ways that enable this process for you to, when you open windows, steal people's content, they will do a remote shell into your system. And before you know it, if you, especially if, if you're on a shared land, your data has been stolen without your even without you knowing that there was even an activity occurring key logging key logging i actually mentioned what it is key logging is just the ability to capture people's keystrokes so even though you're typing passwords on your zenith bank uh, mobile app do that the bank is seeing it this also there was a case in a study like this in Oweri, and my partner then i was in a financial institution we went for an implementation for in Oweri only for us to go to a cyber cafe and this is why using third party systems for your personal transactions especially financial transaction is not in every way encouraged because the truth is in cyber cafes for instance you have no idea who has used that system before and if when people use it it's, it's a public system it's never advised for you to conduct business transactions on the public system why because remote software can be installed it may not even be the cyber cafe admin it may just be a third party that have installed a software okay everybody that uses this system till jesus christ comes i'll be having their username and password and even the cafe admin doesn't know because it is hidden and they just have to put a key most key logger software provides the ability to put an email for you to be sending every user keystroke to a remote person. So you'll be surprised if you want to, you are expecting money transfer, only for you to just, they said they've sent you the mail, you go to your to a cyber cafe, type your password, you've seen your code, copy the bus before you reach the bank. They said, your, you, uh, are you Mr. Mika? You've, you just left now, you collected your money now. I saw you, you, you uh, and you said, no, 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 I'm the real Mr. Mika, someone has collected your money why because you use a public system that you don't know their cyber security or their information security compliance level at all it's just like a public toy you understand it is never encouraged not that you can't use it but the best things you should use for public system it's actually a best practice is to browse read news not for sensitive financial transactions stealing passwords saved in the system and cookies yes this is also one of the reasons and the tenets of secure software development life cycle it is important that this can this when you store cookie um, cookies on encrypted cookies on the browser first it allows people to be susceptible to a um, man in the middle attack once people can steal your cookie on a shared land environment believe you me it there's a tool that does this netcot now most it administrators are actually netcode is actually free on the internet that's the most worrisome concern about this these tools are actually free but you can you, I, I put a disclaimer here when i tell you netcode i'm not telling you netcode to go and hack another person system for educational purpose only because we'll be exposing you to a lot of information and a lot of tools that can enable that enables you to be 
um, cyber criminals to carry out these actions why is it why are we telling you this it's not because we want to excite you or show you we can it's because for you to actually be compliant with some level of defensive practices it is important you know how they even perpetrate this crime so you know how to protect yourself i don't know are, are we together can you still hear me yes Hello? we can hear you okay 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 thank you um if you have any questions, just drop it in the chat after the session i will attend to them so let me go so malware infection vectors specially crafted email attachment this has actually evolved now nobody will send you an attachment to your gmail because they know gmail will block it rather they will send you to a link that a lookalike link or impersonate a gt bank email address and send to you and fill the documents with macros when they fill the documents with macros on opening of this document if you open that document a lot uh, it doesn't end well let me just put it that way because a lot can happen more importantly if you if you have if you don't have an antivirus even if you have an antivirus most um they, uh, there are a lot of technologies such as vb script it's actually an old technology that enable a user to even create another user on your system do you understand web links web links one of the trends the most notable trends in this is actually um the homoglyph attack the homoglyph attack impersonates hundred percent when I mean, I mean 100% another domain name, exactly look alike. So you're going to see stellingbank.com sent to your WhatsApp, and you see stellingbank.com, the real stellingbank.com. Believe you me, you cannot differentiate it. If time permits us, we'll do that demo too. Download packages. It's even when our, it's, this is why um, Google Play Store updated their policy on developers who upload content on their store. Also, Apple is even worse with these policies. They don't allow, they vet a lot of applications before it's been developed. There are applications that you download that actually exposes too much information about yourself to people. True color is not regulated by any government or international consortium. It's just like an individual like you and I. But when you install true color, it's going to tell you you should say, give him access to your content. You should give him access to this and that. For goodness sake, what does Bible, your Bible, what does your news, your news application, what why does it require your messages? Do you understand? So um that's 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 with the malware infection um torrent files torrent files is not bad but also in practice um confidence i saw you so let's go back let's go to a demo session now um i'll be stopping it here i would like to demonstrate how your information can be stolen in through a mobile through your android phone without you knowing so um let me see are there any questions are there any questions before we start the practical session okay what area of layer of protection can you add if you're using email like um round cube yes you can use cloud fair i will note that question down email layer for round cube round cube is a very popular service for most c panel emails um well noted so um please just send um keep just keep posting your questions and i'll attend to them so let me go into demonstration of how your how now this demonstration is going to expose um the second so let me share my screen. So uh, what I did now is to use, I'm using a Samsung phone and I'm actually also using an LG phone, but the one in front of you is the Samsung phone. So um, can everyone see my screen? Please, can I have a consent on this screen? Can everyone see my screen? Can everyone see the screen? Hello?
Hello. Can everyone see the screen? Um, can you hear me? Okay. okay 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 i've seen the feedback yes i've seen the feedback yes i've seen the feedback thank you so now in this screen what uh, what we did was um we actually i'm going to be showing you how you 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 <laughs> it's actually funny but i'm going to show you why it is very very important for you to treat things like permissioning which we should not joke about it now from your we are in a we are actually in the pre 5g era now now what does this what what risk does this expose us to the rate at which cyber crime can can occur is going to be so swift that you won't even notice that your phone has been closed overnight and at the same time, which most businesses in the internet has become an enabler for vital business and government operations. There's so many um, um, exposures of vulnerabilities. We put ourselves as individuals, as also employees to reputable corporate entities. Why we, when we use our phones or when we authorize access to third party, give unrestricted or unrestricted access to third party applications we use. For goodness sake, if your company gives you a phone, don't don't assess content that is not um, are in alignment with the acceptable use policy of your company or in the bring your own device um, um, policy of your company. So what I'm going to be demonstrating to you now, I'm just going to be showing you how you can how an app on your phone can be stealing your data and every time you restart your phone. In short, it's going to it also have the ability to provide individuals with they can actually call your phone remotely without you knowing from the background a third party malicious actor can actually have access to your sms as you are receiving call he's actually helping you to listen to your call logs listening to the call as you're receiving call as your phone is saving the, your outgoing incoming call even rejected call a third party can actually have access to those call logs as you send message a third party can actually be reading those message without you knowing why because of unregulated use of your phone or align your phone installing third party applications that you don't know that you that and you give them permissions that are unnecessary your loan application asking you for your contact for goodness sake why if true caller gives you application a request for contact allow it for installation go to your permission and disable it so let's start um i will i won't just have I'm going from my file manager and i'm going to be installing the app we call this app national agricultural covid19 pandemic initiative just something that's going to lure the user it's installing Wow, I like the name. <laughs> <laughs> the name is so fraudulent. <laughs> yes, I, I, I saw one recently, I received one recently that had to be the, uh, some tips, economic tips around living uh, operating a business in COVID 19. It was a lie, it was so, a rat. So, so <laughs> now, just, just that once I open the application, open. National Nigeria Agricultural Initiative. The first thing is going to ask for is your location. Now, to prevent this thing, why is even at this point why this application is asking for my um 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 uh, for my permission is because I'm using the latest Android um uh, Android nine, uh, like the latest Android distro from Google and from Samsung. On my LG, all those marshmallow LG. The worst part of it is that 
it's not going to ask you anything like permission if you if i give you this app and you install on your phone it's not going to ask you anything like permission if you're using it, um, older android versions like android 6 7 5 and down below so now let us grant this application access allow this is what true call and all those third party application ask you allow access to your contact allow allow to your phone calls allow allow to your call logs allow allow to your messages allow and once you allow how we did it is that immediately it just sleeps and it nearly sleeps you have no idea that this thing is already sending it has gone through your messages gone through your call log and it has started sending all your data just even when you call the application back up it has actually it has already started sending your data to the remote criminal without no interaction how do we prove this now we configure this app to send information to my to my own email let me open my email um and let me share my screen with you so this is my email can everybody see my outlook yes i can see your outlook so the way we come so let me um fetch new new data test email and see if it has sent anything send and receive send and receive send and receive i'm having a call sorry Send and receive. So it's fetching, it's fetching, it's fetching. It has sent the call logs, it has sent the SMS. Can you see it, guys? Can we see it? It has fetched the call logs. A call just came in now and it has fetched it. And that's all my call. Like, this is too much information for God's sake. It shows all my call, it shows the number, it shows the time, it shows the date, it shows the duration, it shows when I picked it or not. Now, it also shows my SMS. It's also showed, my, now let me go to my SMS. Please don't laugh at me when you see my SMS. So, okay, confidence, you actually sent me an SMS. Yes, I did. So it's, it's actually exposing us in the public. It's showing that you sent me. <laughs> so this is what it's actually showing you. Now, imagine this app is running in the background. And the way we configure this app, it's meant to send information to the remote criminal every 10 minutes. And every time. Now, we also implemented a functionality that from where we are, if you we, we didn't request in this version for the version for microphone but we've actually demoed it we will show you how we can remotely initiate the microphone and listen to the background every background conversation from the target device Rock, um, I think we've lost um, video from your side. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you now. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you, but we can't see your screen or anything. From Hello, any can video you hear me now? The, light, the network went off. I don't know if anybody can hear yes. me. Yes, we can hear you, but... We we can't see anything from your side, so we can hear you. Oh. We can't see your screen, we can't see anything. Can you hear me? Wait. 
Yes, I can hear you. Obadere is um Obare is asking if we are going to get a record you're going to get a recording. Yes, no. you're going to get a recording in exactly Hello? twelve hours from the start of this webinar. Um, you're going to get a recording. Yeah. Hello, can you hear? Can you hear me now? You hear me? Okay, 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 okay. I see that you can hear, but you can't see the screen. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. That's cool. That's cool. Um, so let me close this up and see. Okay, confidence, I just saw your message. Let me close the app and see if it's going to send us your message again. Um, let me share my screen. Um, no. Application window. Okay, so um, so that's that's how that's how delicate that's how delicate um, um, our informations are, and we have to be very very be careful. We have to be very very careful with the um, um, with the whoever we who we grant access our information to it's very very important because the truth is in as much you think people don't have access now what does it what does this actually even create for us this actually creates uh, let me let, let's let me let me share my screen to let me do the debugger because part of the presentation is to show you a debugger and what this application does in the background and the level of information it's actually it can um collect from a user let me share that part for you so this is the debugger and let me maximize it so i'm going to delete this call logs this information and i'm going to initiate a debugger actually can give you access to what an um application is doing you understand now you can see from here the application the first thing it did is to is to go and get my access, request permission, and check for permission. So on this place, it's actually showing you that, see, access to location granted, class location granted, read contact granted, read phone granted, granted, access to camera denied always. We didn't request for any as, um, camera access. Access to rights to contact granted, or the rights to contact, is to create contact denied because we didn't ask. Now, it now goes to get um, today's date. Then now what it does is to loop through my call logs and get all the calls I've made. This is exactly, um, TrueCaller has a PhD in doing this thing. They, they, are, they are the best, not just true callers. I shouldn't limit it. To, even they have a business, they can defend their course with a business side, which is not our business because they are giving us a free service, but it's not utterly free. We're actually paying with our own data. So that's what determines their business revenue, which is not actually our concern or a good practice. Now, what this does is that when it gets your contact log or your call logs, you can see this place. It says send email sent successfully. Let me let me zoom it so you can see it very well. Now you can see it sent email sent successfully so the first thing it did is to get my call logs send now get my messages you can see yes we can hear you you um confidence you just sent one message now yes we can hear you address but your sound went off get the messages and send successfully now this is because we configure this application to get this and send this 
just today's messages. We limited the query to just fetch to a day's message, the last 24 hours from the person's phone. When you install an application and give it undue access to your data, it can actually take all your messages from day one you bought that phone and all your call logs, as long as it is there. It can actually um, initiate your camera and record all what you're doing in the background it can actually we can actually place a call on your phone and push it at the background without you knowing yes if time will allow us to have another session of um no four magas webinar we will actually do further advanced um proof of concept on how exposed people could be when they grant on due access to um applications do you understand now look at it now with just this demonstration we've showed you now let me go to let's go back to the slide look at how exposed our government agencies could be look at how exposed and if not for the coronavirus pandemonium we were we had we it was just of recent we are seeing issues of TikTok. we are seeing issues of um, um all these social media apps collecting people's data and sending it to china for goodness sake, these practices are practices that there should be a protocol that restricts what a government employee or even a corporate employee can do with his or a, um, um, a corporate issued devices. You understand? That's on the other side. Um, this is one of the case studies. We are almost um, at the end of the session. This is one of the another case study. So now, now we are in a, pandem um, a pandemic environment. Part of these things people can do with your data are things like cyber extortion. Cyber extortion, this is a mail transfer 1,000 Bitcoin to the following address. You cannot track Bitcoin record. That's why regulation over it has been ongoing for a very long while. You could be thinking, why the hell would you do that? Well, put together yourself because I'm going to move your world at this moment. I have unsafe malware infect on your computer and record video clip of you, of you using your web camera while you browse an adult site. This is one of your code to know I'm serious. Nonetheless, if you don't believe me, reply seven and I'll randomly share video with seven people you recognize. Yes, I have access to your contact list too. Now, what can I wait to make this entire thing go away? Very well. I've already talked about the actual deal. Send Bitcoin and you have 24 hours, or I most certainly will make your life terrible by sending video clip to everybody you know. Your time begins now. <laughs> now, imagine an app that you have installed that is providing your contact list, your messages list, can it, people can remotely initiate your camera without your authorization and the next thing you're having this kind of message and what about if it's true and the guy also went ahead to show that they have one of your code can you imagine imagine the kind of reputational loss psychological loss there are so many motivations for this that that uh, the first place could be avoided that's why it is important you um we will go we are, that's why it's important you apply to best practices when you're using your devices both at home and you should also employ part of the tenets we stipulated in the solution section of this section of this webinar um google breach notification whenever you receive a google breach notification i'm sure most people have gotten this notification before it's important you change all your passwords especially passwords to your bank login to your online banking to your email addresses it is very very important because what this notification tells you is that once of the passwords you've saved on on google's um, password.google.com service has actually been breached and you should actually take steps to 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 um change that password so you could if uh, prevent data loss let's go to the solution so what are the solutions First, if you look at the right hand of this screen, you're going to see a list of permissions. I'm telling you, you don't, most people don't even know this. Go to your settings, go to your app permissions. You will see what app has unrestricted access to your information, your SMS, your microphone, your telephone, your location, your camera, your call logs, your calendar, even your body sensors. You will see applications that have unrestricted access to them. 
Yes, don't get it twisted. Some application needs them for them to, for you for them to tailor services rendered to you as you subscribe for their service. Things like most of Google services, it is allowed. But for goodness sake, there are some apps that they don't even need any permission in the first place. What does your fitness app need your messages for? What does your banking app need your contact for? Really, what does it need your contact for? What does your loan app need your messages for? So all these are more are, are part of the the way are, are ways we could actually restrict our restrict the access we give third party applications to our information. Antivirus is important to install at least an antivirus an antivirus on your devices, either mobile or PC, because it forms the baseline security standard as an entity using um internet enabled devices to carry out your business and non-business operation monitoring permissions this one is chief very very chief like very very chief it's very very important avoid pirated content all those people that go and download pirated candy crush at apk because they want to skip and um, don't to go to level 700 you might put your entire businesses at risk your entire i just showed you a real life case study that happened you can be giving people who modified that um apk Info, unrestricted information about yourself, even your credentials. Be careful with third party authorization requests. I just showed you how we granted an application called Nigeria Agricultural Credit Scheme. Access to our location, our calls, our messaging, our everything, contact. It's very important you're careful with auto, third party authorization requests. Avoid unexpected pop ups. Keyword here is unexpected. If you're not, if like, when you're having a webinar or a video call you're expecting a pop-up a screen to initiate yes but when you just see some funny advert that is requesting with bogus claims expecting you to click please avoid it for corporate devices restrict content and access not just to third party but to even your family to your family you should restrict content for um companies can import on the corporate sites most companies now are resorting to mobile device monitoring monitoring solutions to um, help them address the issue of um, to help them address the issue of um, uh, mobile device monitoring because it gives your organization's visibility into employees mobile op operations there's even a company a startup that is coming out um, staff toolbox that also do this of the chef then vendor assessment and information security compliance level vendors who provide service for your business organizations and you expose your data to them it is very important they comply with at least a baseline information security standard because most times the breach doesn't occur from you for example a real life example was the bolt case it was the integrator it was never bolt there was a time when they said um taxify bolt was hacked bolt was never hacked but the middle company that was handling their data actually did not do well in handling customers data so that's why vendor assessment and information security compliance is required. Integration of an insider threat program for remote workforce is very important. You align you as a company, you have an insider threat program that assesses the risk, not just risk, human risk, technological risk, operational risk that the company is exposed to when they resort to remote operations. Why? Because there are key people that people may be motivated and they can cause harm just because of simply stress. Monitoring of behavior characteristics, looking for ways an organization information can leave their organization, um, um, implementing an insider risk program. All these are steps very, very important for organization. And sometimes insider threats is not always malicious because sometimes when you work from home, stress from your kids, life stress can be a distraction from working from home because it, affected your, it affects your focus, sorry mistake uh, mistake when you click on emails you're not in the office where there's so many controls to to put the staff in check sometimes he may receive an email from his gmail but it's because he's working from home will be mistakenly he can click on that email what about when he go and plugs a usb drive from his wife's computer into his computer something in the office he will never do do you understand and more especially as he's working from home if he's using his own personal device to to access company content all these are conditions that put information at risk so um, the, the solutions are more. That is the reasons why companies like No4, MAGA, and Protect Your Data are actually here to, to, um, 
um, provide these services for you off the shelf. So in this light, uh, we've come to the end of today's session from me. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you for your patience. Till another date. Thank you and God bless. Thank you so much, Rock. Um, we'll just go into the question and answer session really, really fast. Um, but first, we'll take a couple of questions that um, are from me. And then while you are answering my questions, um, uh, please, every, anyone else who has a question that has not already put it out on the, on the chat, please put out your question right now. Um, I've already taken down some questions that were asked before now. So that I've already planned to ask um, um, Rock. So Rock, my first question is this, how can a remote access Trojan be detected on a computing device, especially a mobile device? 